Good morning. We're in front of Clinton Farm Supply, but we're not here to buy a tractor this morning. We're not here to get our lawn cut. We're all smiling because of that beautiful sun this morning. Long time since we've seen the sun. I'm here with Betty and Richard Lorre, the manager and president of Senior Housing. That's not the right title, but we'll get the title from them. We're going to go down uh, later on this morning and see the six units that we have in Champlain, at the, what we call the Senior Housing. They're having a dinner there at noon, and we're going to talk to the people, at least some of them. We're going to look at an apartment. So stay tuned with us here on Hometown Cable. Betty. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. And Richard? Good morning, Bob. Okay, now tell us what you can. Uh, the What is the correct name of the organization? It's the Northern Housing Development Fund Company Incorporated. That's why we call it senior housing, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and Betty's the manager, and Richard, as I mentioned, is the president. Now, what does it mean you're the manager? I collect the rents, do all the paperwork, uh, try to keep everything in order, and uh, running smooth, I hope. Okay. Does that mean that Richard is your boss as president? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Richard? Well, for once, I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, do you have regular meetings with this uh, your your association? Yes, we meet every two months, and then we have an annual meeting. It's the first Tuesday in May. Okay. Now, obviously, you can't just meet the two of you, you and your manager. Are there uh, other officers and other directors? Yes, there's directors. There's uh, five of us in all. Eh? Seven. Seven. So, do you know these names offhand, Kim yep. Remy? Mm -hmm. You're prepared? Okay. Okay. Richard is president. Gerald Blaine is vice president. Bernice Boyer is secretary treasurer. Uh, there's Rita Chapman, Lucille Gay. Clifford Ashline and Clifford Boris. I okay. think that's it. Okay, now these are all well-known and uh, names that you you know here in our community, and, and you people are from Rogers Point and uh, Moores and Shazy watching this program. I'm sure you recognize most of those those names. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Let's t let's hear about uh, Betty and Richard and a little bit about your background. Where are you from, Betty? What was your maiden name? Uh, it was Betty Drew. Brought up in Moores. Graduated from Moores. <clears throat> 1954, um, married Richard in 56, and been around here all the rest of the time. Children? We have a daughter, Diane, that works at CVPH in Plattsburgh, and a son, Randy, that is uh, works at CVI in Plattsburgh. Yeah, you related to the uh, the chicken Jerus from? Uh, not, I say? not to my knowledge. Not to not your to knowledge. knowledge. And Richard Laura is a, is a uh, common name around Shazy, Cooperville. Yeah, right. Right. I went to school in Shazy, graduated in 53, and graduated from Canton Tech in 55. And um, uh, you're majoring? Born, I majored in, in engineering design. Okay. Now, you are from the uh, Shazy Landing Road. What do we call it? What do we call the road down there from the Cooper? Shazy Landing. Yeah. And your dad was? Antime. Antime. Yeah. And a big family, as I recall. There were yeah, we're eight of us. Eight so. in the family, and there, yeah. many of them are, were farmers. Yeah. How come you didn't become a farmer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you didn't want to get rich, right? Well, we're not getting rich. You're not either. getting rich here either. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about the senior housing. When did this start? Uh, what What was the idea? What brought it about, Richard? I think you were involved way back, and maybe you weren't there when it started. But all I know about, it, let me tell you what I know. My my mother-in-law, Lucille Gay. Uh, I remember talking with her in the very early 70s sometime, and she was telling us how they're going to get some senior housing in Champlain, and they're going to have low rents, and uh, they're going to build these buildings. And I said, well, I'll humor her, because that's never going to happen in a little community like Champlain, and the government's not going to come in and build housing. Tell us what happened, as, as you I, remember it. I wasn't in on the original, but uh, pretty close to it, because at the time, we were just attending meetings, and then eventually... Uh, then they came up and elected board of directors, and then I, I was in just before the board of directors were elected. And this goes back, I don't know, in the uh, late 70s. Eh? Mid-70s, 75, Mid 70s, 76, yeah. yeah. But I know that surveys were made, and, uh, and I don't remember everything about it, but a little bit before, but I know there was a lot of work done. And, and, you know, a lot of people in the community were involved, too. Okay. Now, we're not waving at you people out there, but black flies are pretty prevalent <laughs> here this morning. They've come out with the sun. That's one of the things. So uh, don't let my, our hands free. There's an awful lot of black flies between us here. And uh, it's really something out here this morning. We're standing in front of the Clinton Farm Supply. Uh, they are the owners of the Clinton Farm Supply here, and you've seen their ads on uh, 
on uh, our local hometown cable where they are also one of the promoters of uh, your this program and many others in the north country and we appreciate right there help and when you see uh richard and betty uh, tell them thank you and uh, stop in and see some of their fine products here uh on route nine about two miles south. mile and a half south yeah. of uh, champlain the village now uh, let's take a short break and we'll be right back We've moved inside of the farm supply now, and uh, you'll notice that the black flies have cut about in half. They want to be out there where the sun is. And we were talking in, in our break as we moved in, and we want to uh, mention a couple of groups. One is the Catholic Charities that we interviewed in Plattsburgh about a month ago. You may have seen here on Channel 21 that they had a lot to do with the housing. And believe it or not, the Catholic Charities have an office that work on this, correct? Right. And I think as Steve told us back then, most of it is done out of the Watertown office. Yes. And uh, while this was happening, you made uh, trips, or people made trips? Uh, a lot of the people on the board went to different projects and looked at different things. They gave us a uh, very good presentation in Dexter, New York. I think there was three of us that went down there. And uh, all of the ins and outs and all of that stuff was very informative. Okay, and then the community center in Champlain was very active also, and I think under the tutelage of Alice Mossy. And at that time, I think Calvin was involved. Calvin was also a director way back when. And Calvin, what can you tell us about Alice and her contributions? Well, uh, I was kind of aware of it from the beginning because I was working for the North Countryman back then. And uh, that was in 75 and 76. So I would guess sometime probably around 1975. And I say if there's somebody who gave birth to this idea, it have to the credit would probably have to go to Alice Mossy. And she uh, worked with Catholic Charities to get the, the paperwork and find out what we had to do. And Catholic Charities uh, helped guide us. But I would say that Alice was the original driving force. And, Without her, there's no way that that building would be there right now. No matter how much everyone else worked, and Richard included here, without Alice, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened because she gave birth to the idea. I'm glad you brought up her name. I remember now, but I wouldn't have thought of it, and let's give credit where credit is due. I know my mother-in-law was involved. Bernice Boer was very much involved. And uh, you say Alice, and then the directors came in afterward. I remember that my mother... Uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Castine uh, nominated Mel Ferns. Mel was a director for a long time, Richard, very dedicated to this and other uh, movements such as this. And uh, let's see, so who, who built the building? Do you remember who the contractor was? Uh, Everlitz. Nope. From Plattsburgh? Jerry Everlitz. Okay. Jerry yes. Everlitz. Okay, now how did this work? Where did the money come from to put the building up? Uh, we're farmer home financed. We okay. had gotten uh, enter intermediate financing through Key Bank, I believe, and then uh, when they had all the closings at that point, Farmers Home took over and paid Key Bank, and uh, they went from Okay, there. so they, you, they gave you a long-term mortgage. you know how many years it was? Fifty years. Fifty years. <laughs> a lot of interest, but their interest wasn't very high, as I recall, right? It's a low interest it's loan? Uh, around between five and six percent. Five and six percent. We've got customers coming in, and... Uh, we will take a short break here, and uh, unless he wants to be on TV, stand by. We're discussing the financing. You said about 50 years, and you make monthly payments to home? To Farmer's Home, yes. We have payment okay. every month. Now, who guarantees this? Does the federal government guarantee the loan? Yep. All right, we also know it's low rental. Right. So we won't get into that right now, but I want to think about that in your mind while you're ta answering other questions. You obviously don't get enough rent to make the payments. No. Okay. No. Uh, Originally, uh, you built six buildings, four apartments in each, two up, two down. Right. And did you have any trouble filling it, filling the 24 spot? No, they were filled immediately. Do you remember about how many uh, applications you had for those first 24 buildings? I think there was like about 30-something. Okay. And what are the requirements for having an apartment at the... Uh, you have to meet the income criteria, the eligibility criteria. It's a lot higher now. It's almost, well, when we started, it was like 7,100 and 8,300, which was low and very low income. And now it's, uh, for very low income, I think it's like 10, 10, 6 and 18 something for the lower income. So if they meet that criteria, they're eligible. Okay. Now, that did not mean uh, they don't really care how much money you have in the bank. Is that correct? 
Uh, it's the interest on the money. It's the interest on the money, but the uh, we count 10 percent of the assets over 5,000 toward eligibility. So you have to meet the eligibility thing. Okay. And then your income, your rent is based on your income, which is a combination of Social Security, retirement, interest, whatever. Okay. Now you have some of the apartments that are for. Uh, well, first of all, let me go back. There are uh, six buildings, and only one has a basement. Right. Was that the original idea? Yes. It was. And that basement is used for what? It's for a, it's a meeting room and also for the tenants to use as a their recreation room. They don't store anything down there, no. any one of them, no. right? No. Well, where does the tenant store anything extra they have? They don't have too much room. They got a little bit of room in each building, but uh, it's mostly in the apartments. I can see I would never be a <laughs> potential customer for one of those apartments. I, 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 <laughs> I'd have to get a whole building, and I don't think I'd have room for just my normal things. All right. Uh, do you have uh, any part of it for handicapped? There are two apartments that are, are uh, delegated handicapped. And which building are they in? Building one. Building one, you might tell us, the building one is the one that you come down the driveway from Main it's, Street? It's the first one first? as you're coming in. It's, okay. the, it's the only one that faces Route 11. Okay, that's the one that uh, Mrs. Gay and Mrs. Uh, uh, Boyer, yeah. Bernice, live in, yes. and some other people. And then as you go uh, north, the next one is number two. Right. Number three. Right. And then across, across four. four, and then it's five and six right. as you head out onto South Street, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing, I have a question, and it's a question I've heard a lot about. My mother-in-law's apartment, why would in the world would it ever face west, away from the parking lot? She has to walk, and I have to walk, maybe 200 feet to get from the car to the front door. Do you remember what happened on that building? Was that there at somebody's wishes? Uh, my understanding is the architect said one should face Route 11. And being the uh, handicapped building, they got to go a lot, a lot further to get to the front, right? You know, and I often wondered about that. I wondered if it was because of the basement, uh, you know, because they want to go in the back. But anyway, that was one of the things that has been asked to me about the building. Of the original 24, and I don't want to be morbid about this, but let's face it, you, uh, how many of the original 24 are still in the building? We have six. You remember who they are? I would assume that my mother-in-law and Bernice. Lucille and Bernice, uh, Martha Ketty, Rose LaFountain, Della Kay, and Arthur Barrier. Okay, now out of the, so then they, they change over, and obviously you don't, uh, someone has to either go to a nursing home or, or, or leave yeah. us to, to have a space available. Uh, did we recently have an uh, apartment veil available? One is coming up. Uh, they are still emptying it out. It was, in fact, it was your mother's old apartment. Uh, Mrs. Baker just passed away and they're in the process of getting the furniture and that moved out. We'll get it uh, cleaned up and painted and uh, checked out and ready for the next tenant. Okay, now, what happened? How do you determine who's going to move in there? Is there a waiting list? We have a waiting seniority? list. Seniority? Uh, a waiting list goes by when you apply. And you know about how many you have waiting in line? The mid-twenties. Mid-twenties. It's a lot of people waiting for apartments, you know, for an apartment that obviously they'll they, they aren't, and some are never going to get in. Uh, there's no way. There's a lot of them that want just the security of being on a waiting list. Okay. Now, I heard the other night at a village board meeting on Hometown Cable, uh, piped right into my house, that someone said something about someone is wanting more senior housing. Did you hear that at yep. all? Yep. And it sounded like they're thinking of building some buildings someplace. I think Calvin made the remark that at one time Mr. Pomelo said there'd be space available and it's add on to the present one. We, through Farmers Home, we inquired on that a while back, and we would have to go through the whole process again. Uh, we can't use any monies. We can't uh, do anything with this existing housing to do another one. It would be right from scratch that we would have to start. Okay. Now, uh, on the rents, let's take an, a typical, or what's the average monthly average? Let's see if you can give me any kind of an average that the average person would pay there out of their own pocket the average approximately is, yeah, the average is ninety four dollars okay and the uh, cost of an apartment if you had to if you could afford it to pay it all would be how much 461 all right so the monthly rent for those apartments is not for ninety four dollars it's not the 63 or the 129 you pay it's four hundred 
and 61. 61 dollars. The difference between that and what they're paying is paid for by? HUD. Which is? The Department of Housing and Urban Development out of Buffalo. Okay. So, obviously, the, you get in $461 a month between the, uh, the tenant and the HUD, right. and you make your mortgage payments, and the balance goes into a, a bank account? Well, it goes into a checkbook, and then we pay the bills. Okay, so there is, a, some, there is some funds available. Oh, yeah. And you make repairs, you make alterations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I noticed there's one garage. Is that to park your car? I told them I was going to sit in there at night and watch all the goings on, but basically it's just for storage. I'm going to change now. Is there a lot of goings on that you think we should be watching? No. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. I, I, if any of the senior citizens are watching, you must wonder you're not getting, you're not getting involved if you are probably. <laughs> you're wondering why? Okay, you use that building for what? We store the picnic tables in the wintertime, and uh, the guy that takes care of the lawns, he keeps his lawnmower in there, and different little things that we, we store in there. It's basically storage. Okay, so the, the picnic tables are owned by the housing? Yes. I thought those may be individual. Those are by the housing. What about the trash bins? Those are also owned by the housing? Yes. Outside. Who picks up the trash? Is that a contract by the housing group? Briette. Briette's trucking. And that's does. paid for by? By the housing. Okay. The people pay their own heat, their own lights? They pay their electricity bill, but they get a seventy, uh, $67 a month utility allowance off their gross rent. So say the rent would be when you figure out 30% of their income, less their expenses, would be $167. They would only pay us 100 And then the $67 they would use toward their, their utility bill. When Let's go in. over that again, just for people who are wondering what's going on. How do you comp compute the rent, you say? The rent is 30% of their income. The less gross income. Gross income. Interest, Social Security, pension. Right. Right. And uh, then we have a $400 head of household allowance. We have, uh, you can allow, you deduct 3% of their medical expenses and the rest of the legitimate expenses are deducted from their income and the rent is based on that. And say if you came down to $167 from that, you would subtract the $67 utility allowance and they would only pay 100 a month. Okay, so if their lights happen to own, or utilities happen to only be 55, they're in $12, so to right, speak, right? Right, So there is an advantage to keep their like, yeah. utilities down. Mm -hmm. um, what if I said my mother is not living, my mother is deceased now, but she's not living very well with her regular income and her rent is based on that, and I want to give her a subsidy of $10 a week to kind of help her uh, get some of the finer things, a big, big, big donation by their son, $10 a week. Is that part of her income? Yep. Mm -hmm. It would be part of yes. So obviously some people wouldn't tell you that. Right. We just, I didn't do this, but I, they wouldn't tell you, right? We trust that they're honest because okay. if they aren't, there's a little thing on their application. They get a $10,000 fine, lose their apartment, okay. and a lot of nice little So things. when you say income, you don't mean uh, earned or anything else. It's just any money that comes in as a regular right. basis of anything. Right. All right, now, uh, I was going to ask you the lowest rent paid, but I won't. I think someone's going to wonder who that is, so I will want to ask that. Uh, now, the, the typical apartment, and we'll see one later, is, uh, tell me how many rooms. There's a galley kitchen. There's a living room with a dining area at the end, a good-sized bedroom, the bathroom, a big walk-in closet, and a couple of smaller closets. All right, I've heard some comments about it isn't good to have a second floor because these are elderly people. Was that ever considered to having only a one floor buildings originally? Was no, that a, it no, never was even no. considered, right? The housing costs are... Well, it was considered, but uh, we went to two uh, floors. Okay. There's some people that prefer a second floor. Yeah, they feel that they're safer, yeah. right? And uh, they, they can see better. Now, is there land available there that if you want to expand? I honestly couldn't answer. I really don't know. I would assume that Mr. Pomelo would probably sell us more, but uh, I don't know. All right, let me just ask you one more question. We named Mr. Briette, who, who keeps the, the uh, pickup. Who keeps your lawn so nice? Rainy Barrier. Rainy Barrier, and he also, who plows the, Carl, the winter? Carl Friends. Carl Friends. So that, if you've got any complaints, you talk to those people. And if you want, you want to know how nice they look, it's Rainy Barrier for in the summer and Carl Friends in the winter. And they are well kept. Yeah. They are very well kept. Uh, 
What else can you tell me that I haven't thought of asking you here that you might be prepared for? <laughs> I didn't just pop in here this morning, you know. I told Betty and then Richard we were going to, we've been planning this about a month, and I think that it's of interest locally. Uh, can someone have uh, a guest overnight? You can have company up to two weeks. After two weeks, uh, no. Um, one of the things I would like to emphasize is a lot of people, when we get a vacancy, they want to hurry up and come in. But they have to understand, they have to get on the waiting list first. If they're not on the waiting list, they don't stand a chance of getting in. I mean, this is, we're governed by HUD and Farmers Home, and this is one of their rules and regulations that we have to have them on the waiting list. So if they got any thoughts at all of wanting to move into that senior housing, you better get on the list and get right. on the list now. Now, do I have to be from the town of Champlain? No. Do I have to be from Clinton County? No. There, there isn't a set criteria. We like to have the local people be on the list, but uh, it's not uh, something that, uh, you Do know, if you moved in from Timbuktu and you wanted to live here. That isn't too likely, but no, because no one wants to move into an area where they don't know anybody. There's no reason to do a thing like that. Even if it's a rent, it were inexpensive, there are other buildings, you know. And how is the Moors uh, building? Have you been into the Moors building? I, I haven't been in it. Have no, you been in? All right. How does their operation differ than yours? Are they, were they financed the same way as far as you know? From what I understand, it's completely different. Completely, completely different. Completely different. Okay, and then you've been operating. They moved in, uh, 78, 79? 79. 79. 79. And it was no trouble, as you say, filling up all the apartments, right? Do you know how many single... Uh, Single people live in, in contrast to a couple? We have only one married couple. One married couple? Yeah. Well, I can see that uh, if any of you older people out there, senior citizens who are not uh, married and you don't live in the apartment, uh, come around the senior housing. There's a lot of ladies live there, right? We, so very, uh, they'd be glad to see you people. <laughs> and You could go shopping together at the Grand Union. <laughs> I'm going to make some matches out of this. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take another short break and give Calvin a rest of his shoulder. Well, we've now moved over to under the palm tree. Is this a palm tree, Betty? It's some kind of a citrus tree. It was uh, started from a seed by Els McMonagall that used to live at senior housing. And uh, when they moved to North Carolina, she very generously gave it to me, and I didn't know what to do with it, but it just keeps coming. It keeps yeah. growing, and it's quite a conversation piece. Sure is. It's big here. So we're standing under the tree, and uh, as we had our break, it was mentioned, Calvin noted that uh, some of the senior people who move here have are come for another reason if they are uh, in living here locally. We've had a few move back into the area that their children are here or they were grew up here or were here when they were first married and wanted to come back home. So that's why we get a lot of different ones. That's why we don't tell anybody you can't come in because you aren't from Champlain. Okay. A, a, a fourth item here has got into the picture. Richard, Betty... Bob, and now we have a plaque. And I'm not going to present this to Richard because that's already been done. In 1979, it says, in appreciation and recognition, commendable service and noteworthy achievement in the community, this honor plaque is presented to outstanding citizen Richard E. Laurent by the Woodman of the World Life Insurance Society, 1979. And this was done primarily because of his work and the president of the... Uh, Senior citizens, or the name that they used before. Tell us that name again. Richard, you tell me this time. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh, Betty? Northern Housing Development Fund Company Incorporated. Okay. And uh, here, Richard, hold your own plaque. That was presented. Uh, the Woodman give a plaque of, uh, for recognition for, of a local citizen uh, each year. And I think this was the fourth year, I think they mentioned. Uh, previous uh, others had nothing to do with the senior citizens building. Richard's did. And uh, that, that's great. It's here in the uh, business location where everybody can see it. And uh, I'm sure that the Woodman, as well as the Catholic Charities and the local uh, uh, religions, all appreciate all the work that Richard has done for the uh, senior housing and for the senior people, not only for the senior housing, senior people in our area. And uh, your father would be very proud of you. I uh, think so. Uh, I, yes, and he wasn't around at, no. at that time, right? No, I, I'm... Uh, and it, it's just too bad that our parents are not available sometime for, uh, to, to see some of these things because 
we might surprise your parents sometimes, <laughs> Richard. I'm sure they didn't give us all this credit when they were around. And maybe you don't give your own children the credit we deserve. So out there, all you fathers appreciate your children, and your children appreciate your father. Isn't that nice? That's very nice. Happy Father's Day, too. <laughs> We'll be moving down now to the housing itself, and you'll be able to see some of the buildings. We want to get there before lunch. We're in the middle of the Senior Housing uh, Authority here. Uh, premises with, right, within between building number one and two and we're standing at the base of the flagpole for two reasons it's very pretty number two we couldn't stand any higher because it's a real high pole Betty. right but right. tell us about the plaque first of all i hear that there was a donation here the legion did the base and the footing and donated the flagpole woodsman of the world donated our first flag uh the plaque down here on the bottom is the original board of directors when this was completed February 15, 1979, Richard Lauren was president, Calvin Castine vice president. Mary That's this Calvin this Castine Calvin right here. This Calvin Castine, yes. yes, he did good. Uh, Mary Ann Mara was secretary, Ruth Letourneau was treasurer, then there was Gerald Blaine, Rita Chapman, Mel Ferns, Lucille Gay, and Alice Mossy. Okay, now I understand that, that Richard was not the first president of the group? No, when it originally was formed, uh, Dick Collins from Rosses Point was president, and uh, he resigned, and then Richard took over, uh, and we went from there. Okay, now from the original group that are on this plaque uh, 11 years ago, Alice Mossy is not uh, no longer a director. Alice Mossy. And it, Calvin. And Mel Ferns passed Mel away. Mel Ferns, Mary Ann Mara, and Ruth Letourneau. Okay. And they've been replaced by the people we heard about before, right. that it's now a seven-member board? We went from a nine-person board down to a seven-person board. Uh, more manageable, more easier? Well, you got uh, more interested people in at the meetings. Well, not interested, not that the others weren't interested, but it kind of gets, uh, they had other things to do. Okay, now, I noticed that, I know we're in Champlain, and uh, these are mostly local people, except for one there with Mel Ferns, was of uh, Moore's and Rogers Point, I beg your pardon. Moore's, Rogers Point, and Champlain were in here. Uh, well, see, uh, Richard Rich is from Shazy. We uh, Richard is Shazy. Yeah. And, okay, Rita is Shazy. So we got yeah. the four communities. Right. The Hometown Cable viewing area. You're watching this on Hometown Cable. I remind you that we're, our focus today is on the senior housing just behind the uh, post office in Champlain, next to our shopping center. We're talking to the manager, Betty Laurent. Her husband, Richard, is the president. And we're very honored, and she also brought good weather because we knew we were going to be outside today, right? Right, right. And uh, we got work to do. We got to go home and cut grass today and uh, do some other things, Betty. Right. I'm very pleased that you uh, took the time and, and allowed us mm -hmm. to talk with you. I think this has been a conversation in our community for all of 11 years. And uh, we're going to visit uh, now, I understand, with. Oh, there are other people I want to mention, or you can mention, that were involved in the original uh, work for the housing. We had an attorney. Jim Keeble uh, did a lot of hard work for us, and we really appreciate it. He was our attorney when we started. Gordon Woods out of Burlington was the architect. He did all the designs uh, with the understanding that if it didn't go through, there wouldn't be anything in it for him. Um, I forget anybody, Calvin? No, you mentioned Everlet. Yeah. yeah. And Alice, of course, was uh, yeah, very active. Yeah, Alice was. blame me if you forgot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let me ask uh, both Betty and Calvin, uh, when you started, were you very confident that this was going to take place? Yeah. You were? I mean, or were you just... There was never any question in my mind that was going to happen. You, you thought it was, you knew it was going to happen. You Not just for wishful thinking. Well, I wish I could be as confident. So my mother-in-law, I want to apologize right now because I used to humor her. And she'd say, you know, we're going to have this. And I'd say, yes, until I got home. And I said, Tracy, you know, I, I hate to disappoint her, but I don't <laughs> think that's ever going to happen. But that was the only time I've ever been wrong in my life. I said it was right when I married her daughter, right? And my mother-in-law uh, has been uh, very active here, I know. And we use, the, we use the basement at Christmas time. We have a party for the gay family. What's the, what's the story on that? They can, the tenants can have a personal function. They can use if they ask ahead of time so that we don't have a conflict uh, for anything personal. There are no political or uh, 
religious or any of the other things, but it's for the tenant's personal use. How many times a year could they do that? Whenever they wanted they, to. As long as it's open, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there any additional cost to them? I mean, they don't have to pay extra for no, that? No. Who pays for the, the electricity in the basement? Uh, Northern Housing does. Okay, and then the hallways? Um, Is that part of the way? There's four people in the apartment. Who four, pays for the hall lights? Uh, four people. The upstairs people in the D apartment and the B apartment downstairs pay the hall lights. Uh, the C apartments have the mercury lights attached to their bill, and we reimburse them at a fair rate okay now the usage a and b is downstairs a and b are downstairs a okay. apartment is to the right okay now my mother was in a right. so this is building number one the handicap building right. that ramp you they, they that's, that's not really a ramp for the handicap that's to get in to the basement without going through the front uh there's also an entrance to the basement from the front that's to go down and goes into the basement for any of these uh functions they have and they'll be using that today yep. to go in and have what is the dinner they're having today what's that uh, for each month a different building is in charge of a potluck and a birthday party where we uh have birthday cake and hopefully sing happy birthday to all of the tenants that have a birthday that month i thought it was in a, a dinner in honor of hometown cable coming to visit well you're very welcome that's why we planned it for this day so you guys could have a bite with us do you, you know so whether the I... senior citizens watch hometown cable they're all hooked to hometown, <laughs> as far as I know. They they watch it. I know yeah. they they're very interested, and they're always asking, "What's coming up? What's coming up?" And uh, Calvin's got such a wide coverage of the things that uh, that are on. Okay. Uh, from the other night, he, he did a school board uh, meeting. We had the uh, the budget hearing, and he got out of there at 25 minutes after nine. And I got home, and I know at quarter eleven it was already showing, and it showed then. It showed after. Uh, three o'clock in the morning and it showed again after I think 10 or 11 and following uh, day in time for yesterday's election and uh, voting on the budget. I didn't hear whether the budget passed. It did pass. Yeah. Yeah. It was closer than I thought yeah. it would be. I thought that, uh, that because it I know the budget was high but that's another story. We won't get into any more of the budget. We keep this happy today. <laughs> All right and if you look around you see some of the trees that have been planted and, and there's the main street uh, the end of our village, matter of fact, uh, used, it is, the village ends about up where that pole is. Uh, the, the, the two houses on the other side, that house uh, straight across, La Belle's, and the next one, La Voix, are not in the village of Champlain. The last house in the village, I believe, is Duquette's. They are not in the village. This side of the street is on the village, but that side is not. You didn't know that, no, Betty. No, I didn't know well, that. Well, yes, they are not. They, they are paying double the water, double the sewer, and there's a shutoff halfway between that garage and that house, and if any of them didn't pay their bills, they shut it off here, and nobody gets any water. <laughs> we don't have that problem, of course. Right. But, and Pawkett's office on the corner is also not in the village. But this is all in the village. It was uh, brought in and annexed at the time of the shopping center, I believe. And... Uh, there's someone coming to their building now, one of our... She's coming down for lunch. She, oh, she's coming to lunch. They can all bring a guest. The guests are invited. Bertha, Hi. Bertha Grimshaw. Bert, yes. You got some for me? Good. <laughs> Jerry Dumanil's mother. Uh, as we look out, Calvin, you can see the back of the Grand Union, the uh, back of the post office. And there's a good view across. If you're an upstairs apartment, you see even further. And you look out over onto the hills of up there is the corner of Mason Road, isn't it? Mason Corners up on the hill. And uh, you can see south. You got a nice full breeze. Too much of a breeze here sometimes over. Yes, the west wind is The west is wind bad. whips down here. Mm -hmm. the, this is a parking lot. Oh, parking. How do you park your car? So this parking lot is for this number yes, two building. This one is for number two. They all have their designated spots. The A apartment parks in A, B, and so on. Right. And if you're coming here and, you are, and you're a visitor, we ask you not to park in those. They'll belong to the, the residents of that building. And then you park on the far side where we parked. Yeah. Behind there, you'll see there's room for six or seven cars. Yeah. If uh, the tenant doesn't have a car, their, their company is supposed to park in their spa parking spot. And then any other additional company would park in visitor's parking. We okay. have a little parking problem, but it's it's improving all the time. And you don't park on the grass? No, no, right? <laughs> no, you don't park on the grass or all wash right. your cars and change your oil or anything like that. Okay, so this is building number one. Straight ahead of us is building number two. And then to the left of there is building number three, which is way over. And uh, my mother was an original uh, tenant in the lower right-hand apartment. 
and uh, Mrs. Uh, Emery, Margaret Emery was, was in the apartment on the left and down, and upstairs on the left was Della, Della K. Della is and still And she's still there. there. Yep. I think she's just coming out now. Is that Della that's out now? Della and Flora. And, and Flora Gadway is now in the lower left-hand apartment. Both were very good to my mother, and they, oh, that's a great thing here at the housing, that these people take care of each other. They check each apartment each day, make sure that they don't need something. If they're going to the store, they check with their others in their building and yeah. say, could I bring back something for you? And you see they have a little cart that they walk with. They really care about each other and take care of each other, which makes it nice because it's like a big family. And I want to admit, I'd be very remiss if I did not mention a, a, a famous name in this apartment, in these uh, senior housing, was Henry Bolrus, yes. the friend of all the people. Right, right up here in this apartment. Right up yeah. here. He was in the top right of this apartment right ahead of us. He was a great friend of all the people. He helped all the people. And the ladies just flocked around Henry. They loved Henry, all of them. He loved, all, huh? He had all kinds of good he desserts. Sure they were always making him pies. <laughs> they made him pies, and they invited him to dinner, oh, and they man. played cards. Yeah. And it's it's a great camaraderie they have here, yeah, we and really we'll see them. some of that. How many do you get at a dinner like today? Say out of the. It depends. Generally, about eighteen to twenty. Out of out of the twenty. Well, this some of them include guests. We generally have four or five guests each month. Okay. Generally, it's the same ones that come, but. Okay, we'll take a short break and maybe go down and look at some of the others from a distance. Mm -hmm. We're standing on the east side of building number five. You see it on the door. That's building number five. And then the far one is building number six. six. And then this, this is, a, is an exit only. Yep. It goes out onto South Street. You don't come in this way. You see the two uh, trash bins they have. They have the wooden, were made by Felix Misek, right? These last ones were made by Russell. Russell okay, they were the Misek. Us. Okay, yeah. then you see the, uh, the uh, electric units on the end of the house for the four apartments. The four uh, water heaters are just inside the door in the back. There's a small, uh, uh, downstairs there's a small... Uh, Closet, utility, utility room, yeah. room, and they have the four heaters. And as you uh, see, it's all been redone. They, uh, she, Betty mentioned on the way down, they just resurfaced. Uh, uh, what do we call it? That they seal coated. Seal coated this whole, uh, and they did the uh, new lines for the parking. And as Calvin goes up here, you can see the other four buildings. This is building number four to our left, and the famous garage I was telling you about is just around the corner. This is the only outside building that they have, and it's right coming to your house. Yeah. Calvin's keying in on the garage building. That's where all the picnic tables are stored and the uh, lawnmower during the week, you say, when it's not being right. used. And yeah. n none of the picnic tables are out yet. The weather's been so bad, right. cold, you couldn't sit out anyway. Now, I notice when I come in here to see my mother-in-law and I may go out here many times, I see a lot of kids in here with bicycles and I see a lot of skateboards. And I've seen some people come in this exit what, what, what's your feeling on this, Betty? We really don't want them to use our drive and our lot as a uh, shortcut to the Grand Union. They come through here and then they cut across a little grassy strip and go over into the Grand Union lot, which, number one, is dangerous because it, somebody could really get hurt. But we have a lot of senior citizens in here, a lot of them. We have one deaf lady that, you know, uh, would not hear a car approaching or kids on bicycles or anything. So it's, it's a hazard for our tenants. So we really would urge the people to go up to the top of South Street and go around rather than coming through. What about walking through? That, that would... Walking doesn't really create okay. a problem. All right. So if they walk through, there's no real problem. But no. the skateboards, you're gonna, don't be careful. You would hit some people. And there are people back out of their driveway. They're not expecting to see these kids right, here, right? Right. Because there aren't any kids in, in, in these facilities. All right. We're going to go into uh, the apartment of Har Alina and Harvey Rivers, who are in building number four. And they've been uh, kind enough to say we could check their apartment out and uh, see just what there is in one of our apartments. Right. And there, they're just coming home now. <laughs> you recognize these two smiling faces? Well, one smiling face. Now it's another smiling face right here. There's Lena and Harvey Rivers, and they're the tenants in building number four, B apartment. Right. And we're in the living room. Calvin has his back to the... Uh, front uh, corner, and you see the, this is the living room. Uh, he's back. He's in the living room, and then there's a little dinette over here, uh, halfway between the kitchen and the, the end of the uh, living room here. And then there's a uh, washer dryer they have over here, and then closets in the corner. And in the wrong direction. All right, we'll talk about. There's the front windows. 
This wall separates the living room from the galley kitchen, I think Betty called it. And on the other side, we can just look at that afterward. And this apartment is a mirror image of the one on the A on the other side. We're in, as you face the building, we're in the left-hand side apartment, which is the B. A is on the other side. And how long have you lived here, folks? Since July. Yeah. Of this yeah, last, last year. year. Last year. That's right. You moved out of your house. Have you have, have your house been sold yet? No, not yet. You were up on uh, Butternut, Street. Butternut Street here in Champlain. And a great big yard to cut. Yeah. That's right. How do you right. enjoy cutting here? Isn't it? Well, oh, wonderful. This, is uh, wonderful. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Nothing to do is Lower. perfect. We enjoy it very much. Yeah. We like it very, very much. You have to get rid of a lot of your personal items. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a yeah. big change, oh, right? Oh, yeah. I'd cry if I had to get rid of my stuff. Oh, yeah. Would. Would <laughs> <me>. <laughs> You're glad work. to get rid of You're it. You're glad to get rid of it. No, and oh, yeah. You can come and go here as you want, yeah, that's correct? Right. Yeah. You can leave for a week and nobody, your, your yeah. heat's on, there's that's no right. problems whatsoever. Yeah. And we also want to mention that in the apartment, as I remember, there are two different places that you can sound, sound an alarm. Or yes. is there one? Mm -hmm. There's two, there's right? One, there's one right here, yeah. the fire alarm. Yeah. All right, and you can, you could, uh, now that don't necessarily have to be a fire, Did only for a fire? It's oh, I beg your pardon. Okay, that's for a fire only. Mm -hmm. But there's two other places, one in the bedroom and one in the bathroom. Oh, the panic, that's right. The panic buttons. Yes. Yeah, we have one here, it's taped, I keep Okay, in behind, right over in the bathroom, there is a button you can push, yeah. that if you've got a problem, you've fallen in your tub yeah. or whatever, right. You can, uh, there's uh, the and there's one in the bedroom. Uh, there's one back in here. We have it covered with a mirror. And this is, uh, is like my mother. You see now, it's covered by the mirror, which of course defeats some of the purpose. Really, when I told my mother, the bed should have been over here, so if she can't get out of bed, she could pull her yeah. panic button. But she had her bed on the opposite side. And so maybe if we, if we build in any more apartments, we ought to have a panic button on each side, then they could place their bed where they want. But this is the, the bedroom, approximately... You remember, uh, Calvin, 10 by 12? Uh, 10 by 12, maybe? 11 12 by 12. By 12 uh, 12 by 12. I'm and not sure. You'll have to ask Betty. There's, a, there's the uh, ever-present window. Very adequate. Large closet. Uh, very large closet. That doesn't take... open? It's up to you. Uh, no, you don't need to do that, okay. I don't think. I think Harvey wants us to see his new suit he bought. I don't have one. And... Uh, <laughs> There's a little pantry type. Uh, yeah, for uh, little, sto little, little storage, little storage stuff, in here. You know, there, there's uh, the back room. That's there. a storage room. This is a storage room you have yeah. here. It's not yeah. the neatest, Very, but uh, we yeah. Did. Well, see. We okay, yeah, that's what they so have. It's like a linen closet. It's like a stuff. like a pantry. Yeah. All right, yeah. and uh, yeah. So now, folks, how many people out there watching this program would let us come in your house like this, just without very really little notice, and say, "Look, look anywhere you want in our house, even in our closet." And, and they're very, very cordial to us, and you can see they had to get rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah. You can't come in my house and look anywhere, <laughs> particularly right now because my wife comes back tomorrow yeah, uh, right. on a Friday from a two-week vacation, yeah, right. and uh, things aren't quite in the order. They're in pretty good order, but they, they haven't yeah. been dusted well, for, as much. for two weeks. <laughs> okay. Now, here is the kitchen, as Calvin will look down. I like my kitchen. My, I love I'm, I'm standing so with my back to the front of the building. Now, all the... Utilities in here except the microwave belong to the apartment. Mm -hmm. The stove and fridge come with the apartment. Mm -hmm. My mother's biggest problem when she came, she wanted to bring, bring her own stove. You remember that, Betty? Oh, yes. Every time I came over, she said, if I could only have my own stove, it'd be very, very happy. She had a stove that took 60 amps. Oh. It was about uh, uh, four, nearly 40 inches wide, or maybe 43 40. inches wide. Oh, my. And it's a big high with a cover, and I said, well, Mother, you can, well, she said, if I could only have it, I'd be happy. I said, well, then let's build it in. But they told her if she did, she couldn't take it when she left. I said, Mother, when you go, when you leave here, you won't be taking anything with you. Give it to her. She said, I don't want to give it. I said, then don't cry about it. Yeah. But that was a problem. Um, she, if you want to change your carpeting, you can change it. And you pay for it yourself, right? Well, we've been putting, uh, all the downstairs apartments have two layers of carpeting because we were having complaints of dampness. Um... We frown more or less on putting your own carpets. It's easier if we do it uh, as we're redecorating it. Um. I thought there was a situation, at least for Mrs. Emery and my mother, both well, had they, different carpeting, maybe they cried loud. 
that was before we had the monies. Okay. Where we could do this extra decorating. You know, now that we're more on our feet, that uh, we're and able to do more. I'm sure my mother is still very sad. And we lost my mother four years ago. That she didn't get enough use out of the carpet she had put down. And I'm not being morbid. And I, I, I'm serious because she wanted a different color. So she had it put down, but she said if she left for any reason, nursing home or just decided to move away, that she'd have to leave the carpet. You can't pick it up with you when you go. The, the colors stay pretty. Can they hang things on the wall, Betty? Yes, yes. Is there a limit? Uh, we ask that they don't put great big things or uh, that they use a certain type of uh, nail yeah, type thing. Much. Put mm -hmm. them in yeah. so it doesn't make a big hole yeah. in the wall. So that yeah. they're, because no two tenants ever hang things in the same place. How many rooms did you have before, Lena, at your other house? We had three bedrooms. And a living room, a large living room, and a little dining room, and the okay. kitchen. The kitchen was small, we couldn't put a table. We you have know? more cupboard space here. Why don't you come over here and talk to me so Calvin won't get you quite so close here? Then. Mm -hmm. Come on over here, Harvey, too. What's your biggest, all right, what's your biggest uh, change in your life? From th now that you're over here. Now that you see your wife, you can't get out of her sight. No matter where you go, you're in her sight. Not <laughs> having any property to take care of. You like that? Oh, I yeah, love it. Yeah. Okay. Especially in the winter time, the snow. I have Terrific. To shovel now that you have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. It's come to the point. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but it's getting so that you can't afford a house. Well, don't no, say it. Heck, you can say it. You can say anything you want. You're watching on. You're watching Harvey on Hometown Cable. If you have any problem with what he's saying, give him a call on the phone. And <laughs> 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 no, but okay. What about the the advantages of walking to the stores? Right? You get your no, mail. You haven't got to get yeah. in your car. I don't, I don't right? know, it's handy, car. especially in the winter yeah. time. Comradeship, and, and people right. look in on you, and if yeah. you don't feel good, and someone else can pick up what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. There's right. lovely people here. Yeah, they're very, 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 very Are nice. they the only married couple here? Sure are. Oh. Now, you're the only married couple. Now, that's not because you find somebody else, either. You know, I don't... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I've been sick for a while, and I just got my legs back together. I got artificial knees put in. And now I just told the girls over there to get their running shoes on that I'm starting to chase women today. Well, let me tell you something. These women don't run very fast. I hope you catch them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a purpose. But listen, you're in a minority here as being a, a male. Right. Well, you're, you're really in the minority. I'm yelling here for some reason. No. You're a minority. All right, what are some of your disadvantages you find? Do you find it too close? No. You no, haven't found didn't. anything yet. No. You haven't found any problems at all. Okay. Betty, isn't that great? It. I right. just love it. I and you're not just saying that because Betty's here. No, 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 no. Oh, all right, good. A thousand times. Okay. And all our friends, they come, they love it. Oh, sure. they Everybody just been love here, it. even out of town, thinks mm -hmm. it's the most beautiful apartment. Yeah, they never in seen fact, one like that. In fact, they say it's nicer than any they've seen in Plattsburgh. Yeah. Well, uh, that, that's, that's great. This is, get anybody out there and watching this from Plattsburgh, don't forget, you can move to Champlain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> our taxes are higher, but... Uh, you notice that? Your yeah. taxes are higher, but, it, but it's yeah. nice apartments. But you got to wait. There's, there's how many waiting? 30? Mid-20s. Mid Mid-20s okay. waiting. So you are going to get one right away. Yeah. But if you're interested in an apartment, uh, put your name on the list, right? Get your name on the list. And if you're interested in just coming and sit a while, come and visit Lena and then Harvey and stay for a couple days. You can't stay over two weeks, though, right? Right. You can't stay over two weeks. <laughs> one of the advantages is that I couldn't have an upstairs apartment. I couldn't walk upstairs. I've got my heart and my legs. And this is why I got this, because I had a doctor's certificate. Let me ask you, Betty, does, has anyone ever changed apartments since they've been here? Two people just switched? We've had, not switched, no. If one tenant um, passes away or moves, we just had one over in Building 5. The lady had a very difficult time getting downstairs, and the gal that was downstairs went into a nursing home. And because of her real hard job of getting down the stairs, she moved into a downstairs apartment. You gave her priority, so to speak? Uh, Yes and no. We think that we feel that our people that have been here for a long time should really, if they need a downstairs, should have first Agreed. dibs on. Agreed. And uh, yeah, so this right. is what you know. If they really need it, if they just got a whim that they'd rather be downstairs, we do serious thinking first. Okay. Is there anything else you want to mention about your apartment? Uh, anything that I haven't covered at all? Uh, everything. Think of anything. Uh, I, the reason I'm saying that is because I got to get these people out of here so they can go over and eat. Because he said if he didn't get there in time to get all the food, I had to take him out to dinner on my own somewhere. Uh, so he, he wants to get there one of the first ones. He, he said the women are the big eaters. They're getting the line first. You got to fight them, right? We're not allowed to get in the line until the women have all ditched in. Oh <laughs> yes. Except if it's your birthday, and then then whoever then, is yeah, their birthday, birthday, they go for first. They go first. So, okay. And everybody's birthday is remembered at the dinners. Terrific. The ones of that 
What? You like that idea? Do you I remember? think it's nice. Would you like to have your birthday remembered and they say how old you are and things oh, like that? No, no, don't don't say that. The, <laughs> no, no the, the highest word you can say is 39. Okay, yes. All right, now have you used the room at all for your family to have any gatherings of your own personal? You know that you can no, do yeah. that. You haven't done anything like that. No, I haven't done that much of a family. Okay, my, my mother in law has her children over in Crowley. Yeah. She'll do it many more times because it's getting to be a problem now for her, you know, in the building there. All right, we're going to leave here and go over to the rec room, we call it. We're going to call it the meeting room in the basement of building number one. I want to remind you we're at the senior housing in Champlain. We're in building number four, the home of Lena and Harvey Rivers. With our manager, Betty. Laura, she's been kind enough to take us on this tour, and thank you again, Betty. Hey. Bob Venn with What's Going On Here? It's <laughs> cute. In order to come in this uh, rec room, you've got to go through the exercises here. And my voice is, look at me what I'm doing. Now, if I stayed on here long enough, my wife wouldn't recognize me when she gets back from Florida. <laughs> Well, that's enough of that. We're in the basement of building number one, the rec room, and these are all the fine people who live in these homes and their guests. All the smiling faces. This is not a junior class in high school. These are the people who live in the senior housing here in Champlain, New York, and I think you ladies all know that I'm Bob Venn. This is Calvin Castine. We're with Hometown Cable, and we're very pleased that you uh, allow us to come in. If you did allow us, maybe you didn't even give permission, but we're here anyway. Betty and uh, my mother-in-law here, and uh, we're very pleased to be here. You're going to have a birthday party. Whose birthday is it this month? Who are we celebrating? Betty and May. Who else? Raise your hands, and I'm not going to ask you how old you are. I'm just going to say... We <laughs> <laughs> we're talking to the... That's the face that goes with the voice you heard on the telephone for so many years. 26 years at Champlain Telephone Company. By the way, we did an hour and a half at the Champlain Telephone Company recently, and it'll be shown on 17th of June. Hometown Cable is going to have David and other people of the telephone company on. At, remember, if you want to watch Hometown Cable yourselves and others, it's on at 5 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. If you can't sleep, and nine the next morning. So get up early and you can watch it in the morning instead. All right? Now, I'll tell you that coming up, I'll tell you, and uh, this is going to be shown on the 24th of June. All right? And then on the 3rd of June, if you want to watch, Clifford Bulrus's farm auction is going to be on. <clears throat> the next Sunday, we're going to have Mark Berry talking about the taxes of the new business places in, in the area. The 17th at the telephone company, and you're on June 24th. So uh, June the 24th at 5 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock, hi Mildred, and uh, 1 o'clock the next morning, and then 9 on the morning of the 25th. You can watch yourself over and over and over. All right, we've got a couple of people in here who were uh, on the original working committee to get this uh, building going, and I, I say two, I may be others. One of them is... This lady right here, that she said she wouldn't talk to me unless I kissed her, so I'm going to go oh. just like that. My mother-in-law, uh, Lucille Gay, right here, my wife's mother, and you were on the original committee? Yes, I'm the one that really started it. Okay. I was very good friends with Alice Mossy, and we belonged to the JCEO. And after Bernard passed away, I couldn't take care of the house, so I told her, I says, I can't afford to keep my house. I says, why don't you get a grant? Everybody else is getting one. Why don't you start applying for a grant and build a senior housing? And that's where we started. She used to tell me about it, and as I mentioned earlier in this program, <laughs> I used to humor her and said it'll never happen. <laughs> She's just, I'll just uh, go along with it. But I really didn't believe it would ever happen. But she worked very hard. She believed in it, and it, and it worked out well. It worked out very well. And We're you've been here since 1979? 12 years, yeah. 12 years. Yeah. And I know we have parties down here with your family, right, At, around Christmas At time? Christmas time, yes. We've had they five or six of them here, right, six, right. or more? Yeah. Some a little wine? Mm. No, thank you. I never, I never drink on Thursdays. I like that. I don't. We're all with that. <laughs> <laughs> you? Thank you. I never, never touch anything at all. <laughs> all right. And then uh, Bernice is also was on the original. She's a, no, she's not an original. I was. You were on the original committee, too? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I haven't got anything to say. <laughs> she got me all excited to say she was... No, Ruth and I were both 
on the original planning. Okay, you were on original. Well, can you tell us about that? I don't even remember. When did you come here? I'm, I'm not in the housing. You're not in the housing. Well, no, but I you're was home. On the that's right. Committee. So but you was, did it for others. And well, I was on the planning committee at first. And, yeah. and your name is not on the list of people that want to come here. No. You, you're, you're still in your home. You're very happy to be. Yeah, and, Ruth. and Ruth, you're still living in your home too. Yes. But you were on the original committee too. I'm still on the list. And you come to the dinners uh, every month or pretty well? But it's nice weather. As a guest, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here. Yes. He's your guest today, yeah. huh? Now here's a, I want to show you. Here's an oddity right here. This is a male. Very few males in these uh, <laughs> apartments here, boy. He lives a life life of Riley, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and uh, I, I I'm very bad on names. I couldn't name everybody here, but you see, we have how many people here today? Uh, is this a, a normal group? Would you say a normal size uh, this time of the year? Okay, well, you come down here, Calvin. You can just show them we have, there's two restrooms over here. And then there's a bookcase here, clothes closet. And there's an office in here, I believe, right? Is that for them or for your? That's my office. That's your office. She has an office in here with some records I kept. Now, when you're collecting rent, do they mail it to you or how do they get no, the they rent? No, they come over here and pay it. And you go to your, you're in your office yep. and then uh, they, they pay you the rent. Right, right. We do it on the third of the month rather than the first because it hits their social security okay. checks. It's what if they don't have the money on the third? Do you, uh, I've never had that happen. Never have it happen no? in 11 or 12 years, right? Right. That's great. Well, these people may not have a lot of money, but they're certainly rich with all their friendships and their uh, camaraderie here, and they are, they're all smiling. They're all going to go eat, you see? They, uh, here's the lady here coming down the, uh, the aisle. Would you like to walk down the aisle with me, ma'am? Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Huh? laughs> Bernice Ware, she's on our committee too, I'll forget. Uh, she's the uh, mother of my uh, sister-in-law, Sue, uh, Sue Ware Gay. Uh, this is Frank Gay, and she's on our committee with, uh, I'm not going to tell you what year you graduated, on our committee for the reunion for Champlain Central, <laughs> Champlain High School, and done an awful lot of work for us, and she makes our long distance calls for us. And uh, been very good. And she's uh, that whole family, as a matter of fact. You know, her sister Glennis and also Doug Dodds, very active in the reunion type thing. Now, uh, you very just good. shake your head. You got to talk, too. Oh, I do? Yes, what do you want me to say? Tell me what to say. <laughs> Lady has the sweetest voice on the phone when I call her and ask oh. her about the committee. He always wanted to know if I just got <laughs> up. <laughs> she talks so low Sleepy and so. voice. No, it's a, it's a sultry voice. Oh, Bob. Oh. <laughs> Trying to turn you <laughs> on, huh? <laughs> okay, they're, they're in line to get the... And you'll see there's two or three tables on the other side where uh, they, they, can, they can have their, uh, their meals here. <laughs> We're in the basement of the Senior Housing, Building Number 1 in Champlain, New York, on this Thursday, the 24th. We talked earlier, Betty, about the waiting list and so forth, and not to uh, discourage people or to uh, mis misrepresent. When we said there's 20-some-odd names on the list... It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have to wait two or three or four or five years, no, no. right? Tell it, us about how it, what it happens. It goes, a lot of people are on the list, more or less as security. They still have their homes, they aren't ready to move, but they want to know that they've got the option of senior housing at such point in time as they need it. Uh, I have gone through 16 people to fill one apartment. In other words, you're, set, you're telling me now, I want to emphasize that, it, it, this apartment comes vacant and you call it number one, right. and you went down 16 people, 16 people before you found someone tenant. interested at that time. Right, right. Uh, a lot of them don't like to move in the middle of the winter. Uh, they don't like what building it's in, or they want a downstairs, or just little... Haven't sold their house yet. Uh, yes. Could be yes. a lot of things, right? Yeah. They just aren't mm -hmm. ready. They yeah. thought they were, but they are. At the right. last minute. Right. My mother changed her name eight nine. If you remember, uh -huh. uh, I think she changed her mind four times. She even said no, she wasn't. Then she said she was, and she made a deposit. And she wanted it back, and then she changed her mind again. And I think it was three or four times, yeah. right? Yeah. And I tried to keep out of it because I didn't want to have her be unhappy or happy later and, and be my fault. Right. So she right. kind of did made it on her yeah. own. It's the best way to do it. They, it has to be their decision. Okay, and then sometimes people are uh, out of the area. You said you went and got one in, in Denver? Well, she was visiting in Denver. <laughs> and you contacted her there? Yeah, found out where she was. That was the 16th person that we had contacted for that one apartment. You already know, if you don't want to tell me yet, you already know who's going to take this apartment that's being yes. vacated, yes. right? Yes. And it, was it the number one on the list? 
Uh, no, it was uh, number two. Number two on the list. The okay. number one was not ready right now. There was a little situation with grandchildren wanting to come and spend the summer, and that is not allowed. I mean, if they were coming for two weeks, that would be fine. So it's Celine Brodnax from Champlain. She's been in Champlain for a long time. She's got the apartment? She's going to be moving in sometime in June, as soon as it's ready. She's renting now, as far as you know? Uh, she, no, she has her own trailer. Okay. But it, she's uh, a widow, and it's getting very very expensive. There's a lot of renovations, and she it just worked. can't do yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're uh, just about ready to close out, Betty. Is there anything else you want to cover that uh, I hadn't thought to ask you about this? You've done a good job. <laughs> <laughs> You've asked questions I didn't think you were going to. Well, I, we know out there, as you know by my, my mistakes and so forth, we don't rehearse this program. Uh, I kind of tell her that I'm going to cover her background, I'm going to cover her, the history of the place, and that's about it. And with that, my questions come from your answers, and I try to get something else. If we get someone that just answers yes or no to my questions, I, I, got, tough, I got tough with the <laughs> next question. Problem. I got a problem with the next question. What's this uh, plaque up here for? These were uh, people that donated different things when we first started, uh, either monetarily or uh, different things. Okay, well, gosh, I see $100 or more. Yeah, and Is that what it says? Robert and Teresa I see that. Yes, I donated a lot of uh, equipment yeah. uh, that I had had. I had donated some of my toys that I have, and uh, a lot of the utensils and dishes, and some of the other hard. I think I donated a desk, and I think I donated a uh, file cabinet, right? But that, um, for instance, we have the American Legion here, Aris Laboratories, Henry Bolrus, Champlain Catholic Daughters, Champlain Laundry, the Delagar Products. A. N. Derringer, Ardiso Ready Mixed Concrete, Garens, uh, Chevrolet, Lucille Gay, Laura Isaac, my aunt, Rose LaFountain, Northeastern Senior Citizens Club, Pockets Insurance from here in Champlain, Rogers Point Champlain, Kiwanis, Knights of Columbus in Champlain, uh, Robert and Teresa Venn, Robert and Jean, Jean Ward, Woods Floor Covering, OES uh, Chapter 717, Julia Plant, uh, Plant from Rogers Point, and one anonymous. And uh, certainly you want to thank all those people for those donations. And if you're ever wondering and you've got something that you may think that they might be able to use here, at least contact Betty and see if they could use that particular item. Did you buy this furniture that's down here? Pieces here, yes. We're, we're all purchased. Okay. So this is either donated or owned by the, the, the whole group that's in this room, correct? The housing. No, the housing. The housing has, owns has this? Funds for that. Okay. All right, well, uh, standing on the rollers here in the rec room uh, of building number one and ready to fall flat on my face, uh, if not in things to say, at least uh, uh, very physical here as I roll backwards, we want to thank you, Betty, and also Richard for the, or Dick, for, for all of the uh, courtesies you've shown us this morning. You're very welcome. And I hope you people out there enjoyed the watching this show and watch Hometown Cable on a regular basis at 5 p.m. every day. 8 p.m., 1 a.m., and 9 the following morning. If you miss one show, you'll get the next. And if you like the shows, tell Calvin, tell me. If you don't like them, tell us also. Tell us what you want to see. We're trying to endeavor to make these, these different types of shows. And uh, do you get hometown cable? Uh, yes, down? we do. You do, yes. Jay, down yeah. in, uh, on the lake, I wrote right? it, it down the Lakeshore Road, yeah. Very good. And uh, one of our uh, fine advertisers, the... Uh, Farm Supply on Route 9, we thank them and we thank all the other sponsors out there. And patronize our sponsors, please. They make these programs possible for you. And that's it from here at the Senior Housing, in uh, the, just behind the shopping center in Champlain, New York. Bob Venn saying thanks for watching. If you've been over in the shopping center here in Champlain and you've looked uh, to the north, and you've seen six large buildings, and you see four of them behind us here, and you wonder what this is. This is the Northern Tier Senior Housing. Four apartments in each of these six buildings. There are six of them. That's 24 apartments. And I'm standing here with Betty Loran, the manager of this uh, Northern Tier Senior Housing. And if you want to know what goes on here, and you want to hear this, this pretty lady talk <laughs> with me and, and go through everything, tune in this coming Sunday night at 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. One in the morning and nine the following morning, and we will tell you more about the senior housing. Right. Do you think they should watch? I think they definitely should watch. You'll see the tenants here, too. <laughs>